I was asked by the Chishnap village to assist them with understanding a series of laboratory reports that have results of water quality analyses done for metals, for organic fuels, inorganic contaminants. And the first thing to do in this case is ask the laboratory if they can send the results in an Excel spreadsheet so that we don't have to hand enter this into Excel to try to make sense of it and interpret the results. The lab didn't return my calls, um, and as I understand it, this is the only report that they can provide to the village, so we have to make sense of it. So what we've got, first of all, when you look at a lab report, you're going to have a lot of codes hopefully a lot of the pollutants that you're analyzing for are going to come back non-detectable or less than the detection range. And you can see that the first page of this lab report lists all sorts of codes and what they mean. And if you look at the first page of the analysis, you can see that mercury came back in the results column ND. And looking back in the first page for the list of these codes, and this might be on the last page of your laboratory analysis, but at some point, perhaps under the tables, they're going to have a list of codes. And if we look at ND, we see that that means indicate that the analyte is not detected, and the analyte is what we're looking for in this case, which is mercury. So what we're going to have to do is hand enter the results of these analysis into an Excel sheet. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we don't enter stuff that we don't have to. And so for the first contaminant that's in each of these reports, mercury, are there any results? Looking at all the lab reports, we went through and we found that in all cases, mercury, thank goodness, shows ND, non-detectable. So we're not going to enter that into our spreadsheet. Looking through all of the different lab reports, we see that there are pollutants that come up with values. Specifically in this case, fluoride, we have a value of 0.144. And we have to carefully look at what these columns mean. So the first column is results. The second column is LOQ, Level of Quantification. And again, to find what these abbreviations mean, we can go back to this list, and they've got LOQ, Limit of Quantification. In other words, Reporting or Practical Quantitation Limit, which means basically that they cannot say that there's a certain quantity if it's less than this limit. So looking at what we've got in this column, Level of Quantification, that means, for example, for mercury, that if they found mercury, maybe, but their results showed less than 0.2, and then the next column is units, micrograms per liter, they would report it as ND anyway, because they're not sure that if it's less than 0.2 in their results that they've seen mercury or not. So we have to make sure that we're really careful with these units. And one thing that's confusing is when you see a UG, that's an abbreviation for micrograms, which doesn't really make sense because micro is an M, but with the U, is a shortcut for the Greek symbol mu, which stands for micro. So this is micrograms per liter. So in this case, their units are micrograms in a liter of water. The next column shows the EPA standard method. And we could look this up on the internet. And basically, this is saying that this laboratory used this standard method to analyze this sample for mercury. Then there's the container ID, which the tribe or village will be familiar with because that's what they took the sample in. And then in some cases, we've got allowable limits here. There isn't a reference for that, so I encourage people to look that up themselves, and we will do that. The preparation date, when the lab got it and did some preparation to it, and then the analysis date, and then the initials of the person at the lab that did the analysis. So looking through, we see that we have quite a few non-detects. We also have this strange term, surrogates. And what that means is that the laboratory injected a known amount of these chemicals. And if they are able to detect this surrogate amount that they actually put into the sample, that shows them how good they would be at analyzing if there was any of these in the sample. And 
the units for these surrogates are percentage, which means that they injected some 5A androstatine and they got out of it when they did the analysis 81.4%. And for this chemical, it was 72.3% that they got back out of it from the amount that they put in. So this is an internal QC check, just showing that when they spike their own samples, they actually are able to detect what they spike it with. But that's not necessary for us to track because that's internal to the lab. And then you can see that they've got inorganic contaminants. And so we definitely have some values here for fluoride and for barium. So we're going to put those into the spreadsheet and look at the results over time and at three different sites. Because in this case, you can see that this page is covering the analyses done from the samples that were taken from the C1 Atel Creek. And then if you go to the next page, you could see that we've got the Chistochina River sample here. So we have to be careful also that we not only include the results of the analyses, but also which sample they're from. So looking at the spreadsheet that I have started, I went through two of these reports. And after I enter the data into Excel, I change the name by adding on dash in Excel to the end of the file name so that I know I don't have to do that file again. And I'm going to open up the next one. And it again has the initial page be the cover page with the list of their abbreviations and what they mean. And then it begins with the analysis of Autel Creek. And we look through and we see mercury, non-detectable, cyanide, total nitrate, non-detectable, these organic fuels, non-detectable. We're ignoring the surrogates. And we see we've got a value of 0 0.144 milligrams per liter. And we have to be very careful because that is different than micrograms per liter. So we've got fluoride in units of milligrams per liter. But if we look down at the next line, antimony, that's in micrograms per liter. So we'll go over that conversion, which I put into the spreadsheet. So we want to make sure that we've got this value of fluoride, which is the first value in this report that we need to include in our spreadsheet. So opening up our spreadsheet, we see that we've got the data of the report, which is important. That's the date that the report was prepared for the analysis to be sent to the village. We've got the site is in column B. And we want to always make sure that we have these names be exactly the same. Otherwise, Excel won't be able to sort and find. The date of this report is the 6th of August, 2015. So I highlight the text that I want to copy into the spreadsheet. And then I always use the shortcut Control C to copy it into my clipboard. I go into the sheet and I put that in to the Excel sheet by clicking Control V to paste. You can also right click and say paste. But I find using Control C to copy and Control V to paste is faster. So the next column is the site. So I go back into the report and I want to make sure I copy this site name exactly correctly. Control C, go back into the Excel sheet, Control V. And then I hit tab to go to the next cell. And it's OK that it overlaps there. If you want to be able to see the whole site name, you can hover your cursor over the column header and pull it out like that. So the next is the pollutant. So we go back into our sheet and we scroll down to where we were, which was fluoride. If you have a whole word or a whole number that you want to select, you can double click it and then control C and then control V for the pollutant. And now the lab result, that's the actual value. And so we're going to double click this, control C, go back into Excel, control V. And now the level of quantification, which is the next column, double click, control C, go back into Excel, control V. Now very carefully, we want to make sure we don't get the units confused because as we mentioned, there's two different units that are being used in this lab report. So I'm going to double click. Actually, you have to highlight the whole thing because it thinks it's two words because of the slash. So I'm going to select that. Control C, go back into Excel, Control V. Now I've added some columns here. 
to our spreadsheet just to make sense of what we're looking at. So in the case of when we've got units that are not the same as what the standards are for drinking water, I've added a column that does the conversion. So we'll go over that after we finish a little bit more data entry. So I'm going to go back to the next row and look at the next pollutant that we want to take from our lab report and put into our spreadsheet. So scrolling down, we see non-detect for antimony, non-detect for arsenic, which is good, but then for barium, we have a value of 56.9. So I'm going to double-click barium, Control-C, go back into Excel, put that in the right column, which is the pollutant, control V. Now I want to make sure that I don't miss adding the date of the report and the site because those are very important. So we know that we are still in the Atel Creek. So I can do one of two things here. I can copy that there or I could go back into my Excel sheet and I could just copy it from the cell that's above because I know we're still in the Atel Creek. So I do control C and you can see it puts those Las Vegas lights around whatever it is that I've selected and it's copying from. I click in the next cell where I want it to go and I say control V and it pastes it in there. I know we're still looking at the same lab report date. So control C and control V. Now going back to our barium, what is the amount of barium that's listed here? We scroll down and we see 56.9. I'm going to double click, control C. I'll put that into the lab result column in Excel. And now look, let's take a look at the level of quantification. Now since we've already entered barium, the level of quantification is probably going to be the same. But just to make sure, let's check. Yes, three micrograms per liter, control C. Go back into Excel, Control V, and now we've got to make sure that we get the units correct. Micrograms per liter. Control C, go back into Excel, Control V. Now let's take a look at these added fields. We know that the limit for fluoride can be obtained by looking on the internet. So let's do that and find out what are the limits for fluoride in drinking water. Well, I've included the link in this spreadsheet to EPA's list of allowable pollutants in drinking water. So I'm going to click there and that opens up a web page that shows a table with the different limits. So you can see this is on the EPA website, Table of Regulated Drinking Water Contaminants. And what we're going to look for is what we're looking for is the limit right now for fluoride. So we go here and we say, okay, let's look down for fluoride. And we have a hard time finding it. So I am going to try searching on this page by clicking Control F and I am in Mozilla. That opens up a little search box down here and I'm going to type in fluoride and it finds it. And I see that the limit here is four for what? Four milligrams per liter. And we've got two columns here, the maximum contaminant level. But what we want to be looking at is this second column, the maximum contaminant level. And we want to go back down to fluoride. And we're going to be using this limit of four. And remember the units are milligrams per liter. 4 milligrams per liter is the allowable limit for fluoride. So going back into our Excel sheet, we're going to put that in here. And we're in the fluoride row, 4, but the units are milligrams per liter. And the lab report is milligrams per liter, so that's great. They're already in the same units, so we don't have to do any conversion and I'm going to say already in the same units. And now we can see that the lab report shows 0 0.144 milligrams per liter of fluoride, but the maximum contaminant 
limit shown by EPA in their online list is four. So the results show that the water has much, much, much less fluoride than the maximum contaminant limit, which is great. Let's see what it is for barium. So going back to our table, we're going to scroll first and see if there's barium. And remember, we want the second column in this particular case, the maximum contaminant level is two milligrams per liter. So the limit for barium is two milligrams per liter. So let's go back in our spreadsheet. Barium, the limit is two and the units are milligrams per liter. Now our analysis though from the lab shows 56.9, which initially say like, oh, holy moly, that's way more than two, but the limits are micrograms per liter. And you have to remember that micrograms means a millionth of a gram, whereas milligram just means a thousandth of a gram. So if you think about what you've got here, we've got 56.9 little tiny millionths of a gram in one liter of water, and the limit is two thousandths of a gram per liter of water, but in every thousandths of a gram, there is a thousand micrograms. So in order to compare them, we have to put them in the same units. And so to do that, I take the result that's in micrograms per liter and divide it by a thousand because I want to know how many thousandths of a gram are in there, not how many millionths of a gram there are in there. So I'm going to take this number here, 56.9, and divide it by a thousand. And I'm going to put the result in this G column. So I'm going to say equals, and then I click on this lab result, 56.9, then type in slash for divided, and then one thousandths, and then enter. And it tells me that the lab report shows that there were 0 0.0569 thousandths of a gram in the water. And we compare that to the limit of two, and we can say we're very, very much lower than the maximum contaminant limit. Continuing on, we're going to look at the next pollutant that we find a value for in the lab report. So we just keep going down and now you can see when we change pages in this case, now we're looking at the analyses from the Chistochina River. So going down again, we see nothing for mercury, cyanide, nothing for total nitrate in this case. We are going to ignore these surrogates since that's an internal lab QC. And we see that we do have fluoride here. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we copy the name exactly as it is in the report, the same way every time, and put that into the site column. And then we're looking at the pollutant fluoride. I'm going to double click, control C, control V, then the amount, which was 0 0.119, control C, control V, the limit of quantification, 0 0.1, control C, control V, and then the units, milligrams per liter, control C, control V. And now we can continue on and enter all the information and then look at how we compare against the standards. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then take a look at how we compare against the standards. Remember, we're still looking at the same lab report. So I'm going to do control C, control V. So make sure that we have everything filled in that we need to from this sheet. And we're going to go down and find the next pollutant that we have a value for, which is antimony. Double click, control C, go into Excel, control V. Now we're still in the Chistochina River. So I'm going to copy both of these. So I highlight both of those cells, control C, click in the first cell where you want this double cell block to be copied into, control V, and it fills in both of those at the same time. Going back to what we're looking at for antimony here, we have a value of 2.03, control C, copy that into Excel, control V. 
Now let's take a look at the level of quantification for antimony is 1, control C, control V, and now let's check out the units. The units are micrograms per liter, control C, control V, and at this point we see, you know, we've looked up the limits and we've entered those values before. So the most efficient thing to do in this case is just to go through, enter the values, and once you've entered the values, then we can sort and have all the bariums together, all the fluorides together, all the antimonies together, etc., and then put in their limits and look and see how they compare against the limits. So we're going to do that first. So go ahead and enter all the data that you have to into your sheet. And then I'm going to show you how once you've entered all that, it's easier just to go through and compare against the limits and check the units at that point.